I am Sayyid Jafri, board certified gastroenterologist with Bayeria Gastroenterology. Colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer diagnosed both in men and women. Uh, it's not gender specific. It is estimated that this year more than 130,000 new cases will be diagnosed and overall the lifetime risk of developing colon cancer is roughly about 5%. That is 1 in 20 when you combine both the genders. It is also unfortunately the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Approximately 50,000 deaths in 2015, most if not all are preventable. Unfortunately, one in three still don't get screened. Colorectal cancer can be cured if detected early. Uh, despite the grim statistics, there are now more than one million survivors of colorectal cancer in the United States. Now, there are many important factors leading to this uh, improvement. One would be screening. That is looking for benign growths or polyps by way of colonoscopy. Now, colonoscopy itself is a medical procedure during which a long flexible tube uh, telescope used to look inside the large intestine by a well-trained specialist. Although colonoscopy is widely used and the main uh, focus for screening, its miss rate for cancer and adenomatous polyps remains a concern. Colonoscopy is an important tool in the diagnostic and therapeutic management of colon polyps and screening, but dedication and commitment to high quality will ensure that patients receive an appropriately indicated procedure properly performed with minimal risk done in a well-equipped facility staffed by competent gastroenterologists and support staff. In the past decade or so, quality metrics in the performance of colonoscopy are being validated in the overall improvement of the delivery of endoscopic care. Now, there are multiple factors in improving quality. One, based on the patient, the support staff, but also operator dependent. In the next few minutes, I'll go through pre-procedure, procedure, and post-procedure quality metrics. As far as pre-procedure is concerned, it starts from the pre-procedure visit where a patient is interviewed and examined to identify any potential risk factors. So when you come to the doctor's visit, please bring a list of your medications, including any over-the-counter or herbal medicines. Inform us about any allergies and any prior anesthesia experience. Now, the key is the prep. Um, and we will go through some of the factors related to that. On the day of the procedure, an informed consent is obtained after explaining the benefits, the alternatives, as well as the risk related to the procedure. Uh, as far as the bowel preparation is concerned, adequate and ideally a squeaky clean colon are essential for the identification of all possible lesions and safe removal polyps. Your gastroenterologist needs a clean freeway and not the typical freeway in Houston. Now there will be some uh, typical potholes like the Houston traffic with diverticulosis, but studies have shown that if you have a poor prep, that is if the, clean is not, the colon is not clean, it leads to approximately 12 to 22 percent increase in healthcare costs due to need for repeated procedures. And you don't want to have another one if, to come back. So get yourself cleaned up properly. Thank you. Currently, there is evidence to support for a split dose bowel prep for better results and improved detection. Particular attention for medical and medication history should be assessed for aggressive preparation. For example, somebody who's a diabetic, somebody with chronic constipation, or you are on narcotics, all factors that lead to poor preps. Now as far as the procedure quality is concerned, uh, it starts with the nurse who assess you in the beginning and then once you are sedated and you are in the Z, -Z zone of sleep, uh, it is operator dependent. Number one, cecal intubation rate. Cecum is the last part of 
the colon once you start from the anus. So visualization and proper photo documentation should be part of every report. The expected success rate is 90 to 95 percent and in, in screening colonoscopies with no prior surgical history up to 97 percent. Documentation of bowel prep. Bowel preparation scale has been validated, for example, the Boston Bowel Preparation Scale, and it could be used to rate your bowel prep. Those with poor preparation should be re-examined within one year. Withdrawal time. One of the keys to success, it has been shown for colonoscopy, is your return flight. That is, your withdrawal time at the time that elapses between reaching the end of the colon where it joins the cecum, that is actually the beginning of the colon cecum, and removing the endoscope from the patient. Now, most endoscopists will carry out the detailed inspection while withdrawing the scope. Now, focusing on the wall of the colon in addition to the lumen and behind the folds will increase the yield of detection of polyps. Documentation. If uh, the site of a polyp is removed and uh, resected, it needs to be documented particularly for flat polyps and uh, depressed lesions we might end up doing tattooing uh, for for difficult polyps that are unresected or partially resected for future reference or by evaluation at a tertiary center now the key thing about a quality of colonoscopy is the adenoma detection rate otherwise called as ADR Adenomatous polyps that come in all sizes and shapes are usually small fleshy mushroom shaped growths but the main goal of screening is the detection and removal of all benign growths that can potentially turn into cancer. This is a model of the colon. Um, it starts in the anus followed by the rectum. It is called the sigmoid because it's in Latin comma shape. This is the descending colon, the splenic flexure, the transverse colon the hepatic flexure that is near the liver and the ascending colon and the end of the colon being in the cecum or actually it's the beginning of the colon because that's where it starts uh, and that's the small bowel. So a colonoscopy, we're going to take a look at the whole colon and this is called the cecal intubation uh, where you end up doing at the picture documentation. Um, and we also try to retroflex here and retroflex in the rectum for a quality uh, colonoscopy. So that's a small adenoma, a larger adenoma, a pedunculated type of polyp, and that's the cancer. So you can see how small growth uh, with time will grow into a larger polyp and then into cancer. That is called an adenoma carcinoma sequence. That might take a good seven to ten years with the typical small polyp. About 10 to 25 percent of adenomas may not be seen during colonoscopy with current technology, but a poor bowel preparation, technical difficulties, as well as operator performance are a common reason for missing polyps. New technologies are being developed to improve this miss rate and to identify flat polyps. The ADR is defined as the percentage of screening or surveillance of patients who have at least one adenoma detected. Additional adenoma factors indicators are the mean ADR, that is the average number of adenomas per colonoscopy, and the mean ADR per positive colonoscopy. Uh, we are part of the American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, ASG, and the standard for ADR in a male is at least 25% and females at least 15%. Each quality-driven endoscopist will be aware of their own ADR. On a personal note, mine is a twice the standard. So the quality indicator is important as research has shown that the higher the ADR rate, the less the chance of an interval cancer, that is a cancer that is diagnosed within four years of a well-prepped colonoscopy. So in your next appointment, I would urge you to ask your doctor what is his or her ADR score. Now what about post-procedure? Since colonoscopy is an invasive procedure, there are of course inherent risk, both immediate and late. Monitoring these unplanned events should be an integral part of quality assessment and improvement 
program. National organization like ASG Endoscopy Unit Recognition Program, for example, where we practice in BEHEC, uh, we are recognized and it's a reflection that we run a quality-driven organization that is committed to providing the best care to the patients we serve. So the bottom line message that I would like to give is come clean. The squeaky clean will be the best for you. Pre-procedure preparation is important from the patient perspective. No need to scream in this day and age with excellent sedation techniques. Colonoscopy is usually a nice breeze where you sleep through the colonic flight. Get screened. You owe it to your loved ones. With screening, you can prevent colorectal cancer. And ask your doctor what the ADR is. The higher the ADR, the higher the interest rate, the better for you as far as finding the right gastroenterologist. Visit us on online www.gibay.com or you call for an appointment with any one of us at 281-480-6264. We are committed to improving quality. Thank you.